Tomorrow night, 8 p.m., Chelsea take the long trip up to the Riverside Stadium where we will take on Middlesbrough in the first leg of the semi-finals of the League Cup. We're about 180 minutes plus extra time away from a trip to Wembley Stadium. We're finally starting to hit a bit of form with three wins in our last three fixtures. And if you look at the last nine times that we've played Middlesbrough, we've won nine times. What could possibly go wrong? Right, what's happening, people? And welcome back to the Joey Knight Podcast. If you are new around here at the end of the video, if you like the content and you want to see more for myself, please hit that subscribe button. Also click the bell because then you get a notification every single time I drop a video. And right now, please do me a massive favor. Hit the like button on this video. It helps me pump out this sort of content. In this video, I'm going to give you lot my starting 11. The team that I would like to see start the game against Middlesbrough tomorrow night. We're going to react to some of what Pochettino has said in his press conference, which is literally just finished. Finished. We'll speak a little bit about Borough and ultimately I will finish off by giving you guys my score prediction. Last time I gave one of these, I got it right, you know, so make sure you're still locked into the end of the video. I'll give you my score prediction on this game. Let's get into it. But before we do, is anyone else shitting themselves about this game a little bit? I know it's only the first leg, so even if it didn't go well for us, we've got time to still put it right in the second leg. A match that I am very much hoping to be at, but... It's nervy times, isn't it? Because I tell you what, like, we have been so spoiled in our life as Chelsea fans, just taking for granted trips to Wembley, which seem to happen multiple times every single season, um, and getting into these big, big matches with the chance to win silverware. But we do sort of feel, especially off the back of last season, like we were starved to success somewhat. Um, never really got a sniff of anything to, to cheer too much about. The height of last season, the best win of last season was probably the game against Borussia Dortmund. That only got us through one sort of knockout round of the Champions League. And then since then, we haven't had all that much to cheer about. So if we could get to Wembley, where you'd imagine we'll face off against Liverpool. Um, you know, Fulham could could cause an upset there, could surprise them with something they've played well against Liverpool so far this season when they've met. But you would very much favour Jurgen Klopp's men, who are really, really starting to uh, go through the gears now, domestically and in the Cups. So you would imagine we'd be up against Liverpool. Now, we don't have a great record against Liverpool in finals of recent. The last two were both under Tuchel in his last full season. And we, uh, well, we, we sort of drew both matches, didn't we? But we lost both extra time penalties and whatnot. But... I genuinely do think that this would be absolutely massive should we get to Wembley and should we have the opportunity to get our hands on silverware. And as we've seen so far from Chelsea this season, yes, we've had underwhelming performances against Man United and against Newcastle in the bigger matches. We've had a win against Spurs. We've had spirited draws against Arsenal and City and Liverpool themselves on the opening day of the season. So what I'm saying here is there's no real trend that you can follow. It's not like Chelsea are doing well in the matches that we should be winning and then not turning up against the big boys. Is I do think that if we can get to that final one-off game, we've got every chance of beating Liverpool. And what would that do to galvanise this group of players we've got now? The experience of winning something can't be underplayed. So if we could get there, if we can win... I just think it would be onwards and upwards for this team. And I think it's something that will be a real builder. When we talk about a team that don't know each other that well, haven't got the amount of sort of bonding experience and been through the experiences with each other, if they could have a trip to Wembley where they win, it will be monumental for this side going forward. But what about the side without getting ahead of ourselves that I think can do the job, for the first leg at least, in this semi-final tie. Well, let's go through my team sheet. We're starting off with the main man in goal, who, for me, should have no jeopardy about his place, even once Robert Sanchez comes back, and that is... Petrovic, massively impressed by this boy, really, really think he's a solid, safe pair of hands and feet, for that matter, in between the sticks, and I'm really, really liking Petrovic more and more, um, the more I see him, I should say, so back four, we're going to start off right back, we're going Melo Gusto, I know he was over at left back in the last match against Preston, but I think he should return to the right-back slot here. What's going on with Kukurea, by the way? I know I do read the injury updates, but all I know is that he's still out. Um, quite missing Kukurea, actually, and that's not a uh, a sentence that I thought would come out of my mouth this season. I think Kukurea could be doing a good job for us and could maybe facilitate moving Levi Colwell out of that left-back slot from time to time because I actually think that in the match last time out against Preston, we saw Levi Colwell in at centre-back, and would everyone here agree with me? He looks better as a centre-back, doesn't he? So, yeah. Anyway, I'm rambling on here. Let's go Melo Gusto right back. Centre-back pairing of 
Tiago Silva and Axel de Sassi. Now, Benoit Badiashio won't be ready for this match. Mauricio Pochettino has already said that in his press conference. And then we're really at a loose end. You know, I will touch on Mauricio Pochettino's words when he was talking about players that we'll be bringing back soon from injury. Obviously, Ben Chilwell involved in that conversation. So we'll touch on that as the video goes on. But at the moment, strongest centre-back pairing for us has got to be Silva and de Sassi if Badiashio's not there. With, obviously, Levi Colwell starting off at left back. The midfield three is the midfield three that I have notoriously banged on about all season. That is Enzo Fernandez paired with Caicedo and Conor Gallagher slightly in front of him. Enzo Fernandez, I was really, really impressed by when he came back into the side against Preston. One of his better matches in a Chelsea shirt dinking little balls over the top, feeding some of the players, which is exactly what I wanted to see from him. When we speak about a deep-lying midfielder, Enzo Fernandez is not your typical deep-lying midfielder. He is a midfielder that might lie a little bit deeper in hope to find some of the players that we have in those attacking positions rather than there to do a job as a Caicedo maybe is, which is getting about, cutting out the ball, interceptions, winning possession, putting it onto the more creative players. So Caicedo has a really, really important job here. Probably the most important job in this match out of those midfield three because Enzo Fernandez, I want us to use him as a creative outlet. I want him to be laying on balls um, putting the forward players into areas to create opportunities for us to pepper the Middlesbrough goal. Conor Gallagher, I don't want to call it a free roll because a free roll suggests that he's not going to be grafting. Gallagher will be everywhere. Gallagher will be covering that number 10 spot, moving across the pitch. Um, and again, not, not in a typical way of a number 10 maybe, but just being really, really aggressive, especially to win back possession um, in the Middlesbrough sort of defence in and around that position. So Caicedo's job at the sort of anchor of that pivot is going to be massively important. He is going to facilitate Enzo and Gallagher, hopefully being able to do what I believe they can do best in order for us to get at Middlesbrough. Now, so far, I'd say this team's picked itself quite comfortably. But as we get forward, you'll see it starts to get really, really tricky because we've got players in forward positions who are performing quite well, Warren in a start. We've also got players like Amanda Broha, who's now coming to the game, uh, to the team, I should say. And he had a decent game against Preston. Um, so let's just go with it. Let's go right wing. I am going to go with Cole Palmer here. There's no way we can play anyone this season and not have Cole Palmer on the pitch. He's our most pivotal player. He's our most important player. He's the player that's come up in the most key moments. And he is the player that if you had to name one single match winner so far in this Chelsea team, you've got to go with Cole Palmer. Some people might prefer him in the 10. Some might prefer him on the right wing. I really do think we need the legs in the midfield in this match. So I would go Gallagher in the 10, Cole Palmer right wing. Let's go over onto the other side rather than going with a number nine straight away. On the other side, I am going to go with Raheem Sterling. Um, a lot of people will be maybe agitated at that, potentially thinking that Mudrick should be starting there, potentially thinking that Madueke should be starting somewhere along this front line. But I am going to go with Raheem Sterling. It's not just a free kick, you know, but Raheem Sterling, much like I said about Cole Palmer being a match winner. Um, listen, we haven't got those definitive and assured match winners as sort of the likes of maybe, let's say, a Liverpool, let's say a Manchester City, even Aston Villa at the moment, Spurs, um, as the teams above us in the table have got, we haven't got them at the moment, but Cole Palmer's definitely one of them, and I would say our next best shout to someone that can provide those match-winning moments and provide the key moments that get us over the line is Raheem Sterling, and I do think in this match he could potentially do that. Unlucky for Madueke not to be in there, Mudrick starting to hit a little bit of form, and... The, the, Mudrick's the one that I would like to put in there. Um, but the problem is, I genuinely do think that this is our most important match of the season. And if it's our most important match of the season, I think I have got to pick the best possible Chelsea team on paper. And regardless of whether sometimes Sterling's a little bit hit and miss, regardless, uh, regardless, regardless, what, what even is that? Regardless of whether Raheem Sterling maybe sponders some of the chances he gets, he still does get those chances. He's very important for us. I've just got to put him in there, man. And I'm going to go Amanda Broha in the number nine. Now, I'll speak a little bit about Broha because I gave him some praise after that match. And obviously, he hit the crossbar. Um, he rounded the keeper at one point, wasn't able to get the ball over the line. He did score that lovely headed goal. And I gave him some praise. And a lot of people said to me in the comments section below, like, you know, 
Brower didn't really have that good a match. He was he was completely non-existent in the first half. And I would agree with him. I would agree with that. But when we look at potentially like an Erling Haaland, right? Haaland doesn't really get involved in build-up play. And I don't really care as long as he nets goals. Now, Brower will probably never net the same amount of goals as an Erling Haaland will. But I think off the back of a game where he scored, I've got to put him straight back in there. Because if you said to me, and this is all hypothetical potential, it may never come to fruition. But if you said to me now, Amanda Broha can provide you with, let's say, 18 goals per season. But you don't get involved in build-up. And he maybe gets a handful of assists or something like that. I'd say, yeah. I'd say, okay, I'll have that. Because that's better than what we've got at the moment. So I think we've got to give Brower the opportunity to flourish a little bit more um, and for it to come to fruition. But... I do honestly as well think that Brower might go at the end of the season. So let's just stick a pin in that one. See how it goes. Harshest exclusion in that team there would be Madueke, but I have sort of explained it there. And I'd be very happy to see Madueke come back in against Fulham, you know. This is a team that is sort of heavily rotated at the minute. Um, but the, the, the good thing is, in comparison to last season, when we were looking at the rotation options last season, the only one that I would say was coming up trumps for us and was actually, you know, putting in good performances was Jao Felix. He's now gone. So so realistically, the, the guys that were rotating last season weren't really doing anything. Mudrick weren't doing much off the bench. Sterling weren't doing much off the bench. But now you've got Sterling coming back in and scoring. Cole Palmer every now and again. Well, he's not really in and out, is he? He starts both matches. But, you know, he's scoring along that front line. Madueke comes in and out and scores. Mudrick comes in and out and scores. So now at least we've got positive options off the bench. Alfie Gilchrist, another name that I've left out here. I thought he did well. I didn't think he did well enough to warrant a place in our most important match of the season. Yes. I know Borough being our most important match of the season is a bit of a wild one. It hasn't gone the way we thought it was going to go, but it's not all bad. I think we've got a lot to be cheerful about, especially at the moment. He played well against Preston, but that doesn't mean that a semi-final against Borough is the same level of match, same sort of occasion, and I would take him out. Now, let's look at Mauricio Pochettino because he had a few words to say in the press conference. Speaking about Ben Chilwell, uh, he said, we are so close to some players like Chilwell, Badi Oshil and Chuk Mecca. That's music to my ears because I do think that the balance our defence has when Ben Chilwell can come back into the fold might be important. It might alleviate a few worries because I do genuinely hold a lot of hope for Levi Colwell in the left centre back position. I think if we get him back there, then maybe, just maybe, in the January window, we don't need to look at Jean-Claire Tadibo, Tabido, is that his name? Um, some of these defenders that we're potentially looking at because I think we've got enough there for the minute. Mauricio Pochettino also said Middlesbrough are a very good side that we need to respect. The game against Preston was a great example that we need to respect every opponent. If we go to Middlesbrough and we start as we started on Saturday against Preston, we are going to find it more than difficult. We have to use Preston as an example where we need to start matches like we started the second half. So basically, what Pochettino is saying there is in the first half, we weren't good enough against Preston. And we weren't good enough against Preston. I said we were dominant from start to finish, but dominant doesn't mean that you know, the Preston goal is coming under constant fire. We had a couple of opportunities in the first half, but it really was in the second half. And when we turned the screw up for that 10, 15 minute period in the second half, my God, we look good. So if we can alleviate and, and add longevity to those margins that we're playing really well in... Um, what am I going on about? It's coming up with fancy words here, and I. If we can basically play better for longer periods of the game, we'll be better. So that's it. When we look at Borough, right? Borough are coming in off the back of a loss against Premier League opposition in Aston Villa. Actually, saw a few little bits and pieces of that game. Didn't sit and watch a whole ninety minutes. I have got a life, but saw a few bits and pieces of that game. Borough looked pretty good in that defeat to uh, to Villa. So maybe there's a warning sign there. But they are twelfth in the Championship. They're only one point better off than. Preston, who we've literally just played, and let's be honest, their run to the final has been, or the final, the semi final, has been pretty favourable for them. It's not like they've gone through giant killing and, and knocking out all these brilliant level of opposition teams, you know. Obviously, what they played Bolton in the second round. Mad, in it? That's a second round League Cup fixture. When I was a kid, this is showing my age, and I'm only 29, go easy on me, but when I was a kid, that was the League Cup final. I remember Borough playing Bolton. Who won? Was it Borough? I think it was Borough. I think Davis scored for Bolton. But yeah, that was about 2005 or something like that. Um, mad, yeah. But then, obviously, who else have they played? I've got it ripped down here because I can't remember all of them. But dumped up Bradford and Exeter um, before beating Port Vale. 
in the quarterfinal. Now, you look at our run, right? AFC Wimbledon, it's a local derby. Um, who else did we play? I've been at all the matches, so I should know. We played Brighton, pretty good against that one. That's when Cole Palmer really started to show just how cold he is. Um, I think that was his first first full start, was it? Something like that, yeah. But lovely little uh, pass through to Jackson for the goal there. We played Brighton. We then knocked out Blackburn. Um, and then latest, we knocked out the finalists last year in Newcastle. So we have no doubt faced better opposition up to this point. The Middlesbrough have. Um, but, you know, it's uh, you can only beat what's in front of you. What I do know is the second leg being at home is going to go massively in our favour. And we've been having a lot go in our favour in this competition so far. Not so, This is the first time we've had an away fixture in this cup. So... It's good that the first leg is away and then hopefully there won't be any damage done that we can take it back home um, and beat him in the second leg at Stamford Bridge, a match that I will be at. However, and I don't want to stick the cosh on it, one little point I would make so far is we haven't fared that well when the pressure and especially the expectation has been on us to win so far this season. So if you look at the story of the season so far, right, a lot of people thought we'd lose on the opening day against Liverpool, especially um, off the back of how they finished last season and how we were just last season in general. And the way that match started, first 20 minutes or so, we just looked out of our depth, but then we came on strong and we were the better side and probably deserved to win, but got a 1-0 draw, uh, one all draw, sorry, I should say, against Liverpool. So then, all of a sudden, people are talking about Chelsea and they're going, you know what, Chelsea are going to be a lot better this season, they are going to be a threat, and in the match against Aston Villa, no, same colour kit, West Ham, who we played, sorry, I'm all over the place today, in the match against West Ham, we were considered favourites after that Liverpool game, but... We all know what happened. We played quite well, end up getting beat. Then we go and beat Luton, a match that I was at, 3-0 at Stamford Bridge, and everyone goes, OK, maybe the West Ham loss was teething issues. Maybe it was a blip, a flash in the pan. They've beat Luton. Now they're going to hit some sort of form. No. We go and stink out the gaff against Nottingham Forest and get beat 1-0. And that theme just keeps going forward, doesn't it? We have a spirited 4 all draw against Man City. We then play Newcastle at St. James's Park, who are absolutely ravished and hampered by injuries. Um, the expectation is once again on us to go and beat Newcastle we end up getting pumped 4-1 do you see where I'm going with this so every time we have this sort of expectation on us which at the moment off the back of three wins um, and getting over the line in three matches where you know, last season we probably wouldn't have. At the moment, the expectation is very much going to be on us to go and put a good performance in against Middlesbrough and win and that is one Bad character trait that this squad has showed so far. The ability to go and do that. However, that being said, I do genuinely think that we are going to go and beat Borough because I really don't want to get ahead of myself because I've been clipped up and meme so far this season when I have got ahead of myself because it's happened a few times. There's been a few four storms, but I genuinely think we're starting to find something now. That something that we're starting to find probably isn't enough to, you know, make us push on and have a really, really unlikely push at Champions League football or anything like that uh, this season. I think that's too late to even salvage, but I do think that we can be there or thereabouts in the mix for Europa League football. And I think in the cup competitions, we can do well as well. Um, I really, really do think that. So let's see what happens. You lot, I want you to let me know. I'm going to be reading through the comments, right? You've got two options. Either I watch the match tomorrow night and I get my post-match review out straight away. It will just be me, 10-minute video or something like that, talking about the game. Or you can wait until the following afternoon and I will do it with Josh where we go a bit more in-depth in the studio. Let me know in the comments what you would prefer. Before we finish this, I've got to put a score prediction in here. I think we're going to get a second clean sheet in a row and I do think that we are going to win this game 2-0. Do I do as do as far, go as far to say goal scorers? Yeah, fuck it. I'm going to go as far to say goal scorers. I am going to go with a Cole Palmer goal. That's that's a, a goal or assist from Palmer. It's pretty much a certainty nowadays, isn't it? And I'm going to go Amanda Broha. Again, I think he'll start. I think he'll score. Looking forward to this one. Really am looking forward to it. People, I want to know your thoughts. Where did I go wrong with that lineup that I picked? Because I'm sure that you lot will think that I have gone wrong with it in some spots. Just before we go, a couple of things. Please subscribe if you're not already. Also, my boxing channel is now up, running, live. And if I do say so myself, smashing it. We're getting good views on there and it's going really well already. So if you're into your boxing, please head over there and subscribe. Check out some of the content on there. It's linked in the description to this video. And also, my tickets to my fight, January 20th, are linked in the description to this video. 
um, the Ticketmaster link. So go on there if you want to come to Leeds and see me fight. I'll be on first and night, so I'll be out on the beers with all of you after I win. People, thank you very, very much for making it to the end of another video. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, I will see you all after the game. Let's hope it goes well.